Today's video will describe how to implement the standard template library's set. Hello, I'm James Helfrich. The set is a really cool data structure that allows us to store a collection of elements. The cool thing about it is that we can find if an element is in the collection in logarithmic time. And to do so, we can use something called a binary search tree. This video will describe how that's done. There are three ways we can implement the set. The first way is an unsorted set. And this is the easiest way for sure, but it's also really inefficient because all the operations are linear or O sub n. If we want to insert an element, it's O sub n because we have to make sure it's unique. If we want to find if an element's in there, we have to do a linear search, which is O sub n. And even if we remove an element, it's O sub n because we have to shift all the elements over because we can't have a blank spot in our array. So clearly this is not our best implementation. The next is a sorted array. Now, if it's a sorted array, we can find if an element is in there using a binary search with its logarithmic or log n. Inserting an element, however, is still O sub n because once we found if an element's not in the set, then we have to shift everything over to keep things sorted. So that's probably not the best solution. Ah, the best solution is the binary search tree. This is really efficient because finding an element's O sub n inserting elements O sub n, and removing an element is O sub n. So all the operations are blinding fast. If we have a million elements in our set, we can find, insert, or remove in only 20 iterations. That's really fast. So let's take a look at the standard template library set. First, we're going to need to pound include set in order to have access to that container. And then we're going to create a set by using std colon colon set of int, a set of integers, We'll call this S, and we're going to create uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, use the initializer list to have a collection of elements. Um, just for fun, I will also make a set iterator at begin. Now, when I break into the debugger, um, let's see what this does. And notice I have my set here, and I have all the elements in sorted order. And then if we look into the raw view, we're going to see that weird element tree. This is a binary search tree. We can also take a look in the iterator, and the iterator also has a pointer to the element, and there's the element itself, and this also is a pointer in a, to a node in a binary search tree. So here's a class diagram showing the BST implementation of the set. Man, this is complicated. Let's walk through all the different aspects. First of all, we have a B node. A B node, or a binary node, is a single node in the binary tree. It's going to store an element and a pointer to the left child, right child, and the parent child. It's going to have up to three elements, 0, 1, 2, or 3 elements by association. 0, if the root element is the only element, has no parent left or right. 1, if we're a leaf element, we only have a parent node. 2, if we're the root element, we have a left and right, or I guess we could also be an element that only has a left child but not, and a parent, but not a right child. And 3, if we're somewhere in the middle of the binary tree, we have both a parent left and right. Now, the BST is going to be a collection of B nodes. So it's going to be a convenient container allowing us to do common things like insert, find, iterate, or remove. It's going to have a collection of B nodes. Well, it's going to point to one of them, but the whole collection is many. And this is by composition. In other words, if I remove, if I delete a BST, then I'm going to delete all the B nodes. If I create a new BST, I'm going to create all the B nodes. So composition means that the parent creates and destroys all the children. And we can do that with a filled diamond end cap. Now, notice we have this funny pinwheel end cap. This means that B node is a nested class within BST. Since the B node only makes sense within the context of the BST, it makes sense to define it within the BST. This is a subclass. Next, we have an iterator. The BST has an iterator, which makes it convenient for the client to iterate through all the elements in the BST. This iterator is going to point to 0 or 1 B node. 1 B node if the iterator is a valid iterator, or 0 if it's the end iterator or the null iterator, in which case it's not referring to any node at all. Now, the iterator is a nested class within BST. Well, so is the B node. The B node is a private nested class. In other words, the client can't see it. But the iterator is a public nested class. In other words, we want to encourage the client to use the BST iterator. Then we have the set. The set is going to have a single BST, and it's going to have all the common set interfaces the client would expect. 
It's going to have a single BST through composition. In other words, if I create a set, then I will create a BST. If I destroy the set, the BST will be destroyed as well. And the BST will be a nested class within the set. In other words, the client should have no clue the BST is the underlying data structure. They don't have access to the BST, and therefore it's a private nested class. The set also has an iterator. And this iterator is going to be a nested class within the set. And this one's a public nested class. And we hope and expect the client to use set colon colon iterator. Most of the methods within the set are actually trivial because they're just calling BST methods. Let's see how they work. First of all, if I'm going to copy insert a single element, then all I have to do is insert the BST. And I'm going to make sure that is unique. In other words, I don't want to have duplicate elements. And that'll return a pair, the element plus whether or not it was uniquely inserted. And I'll return that pair. Set's find method is simply going to call BST's find, and it will return, well, BST's find will return a BST iterator, but I got to convert that into a set iterator, which the client will use. Erase a single element. Well, first I got to find it. So I'm going to get a BST iterator from find. And then if it's the end iterator, in other words, the element is not in the collection, then I'm going to return zero, which means I deleted zero elements. Otherwise, I'll erase it using the BST's iterator. And then I'll return one because I've removed one element. And even the initializer list constructor. Well, first of all, I'm going to clear my BST, and then I'm going to insert the elements one at a time into my BST. So all these implementations are done using the BST's methods. Now the iterator itself is once again a thin veneer for the BST iterator. So it has a single member variable, which is the BST iterator. And all the methods are going to be just a mapping from the sets iterator to the BST iterator and back. Very, very simple. You can learn more about the sets implementation in the set chapter of the C++ data structures textbook.